What's up, welcome back. I'm John Sarkin, my movieguy.com, your favorite blind film critic. And today I'm doing a recap. It's only murders in the building, season four, episode eight. We're getting closer to the end of the season. The murderer is close to being revealed, possibly in the next episode. But then again, I also think not. But we'll talk about that. So what happened in this episode of Only Murders in the Building? Well, um, I guess we've abandoned the Melissa McCarthy thing. So they've left her house. Charles, Mabel, and Oliver have left uh, the house to go uh, somewhere else to try to. It's also revealed in this episode that Oliver is going to get married to uh, Meryl Streep's character uh, at some point possibly this season they're they're planning a wedding uh they're clones <laughs> the stars uh eugene uh, zach and uh eva are all trying to uh, also solve the the murder because they're they're really i don't know they're really into this um and there's a little bit of a, a squabble between the two of them on the phone about you know how do they where should they go? Because they can't, they don't want to go anywhere where the killer might find them. So they end up like going to the set of the movie, which is set up like Charles's apartment, but not. So there's like, so like there is a murder board there, um, which I thought was kind of funny. There's a scene where he like walks into his bedroom and he's like, where's my bed? <laughs> it's not really his, it's the set. So, um, and uh, we had the revelation in the last episode about the Westies and uh, Howard found out some information and was like, oh, it was the Westies. And he checked my episode from last week and I said, it's not the Westies. <laughs> I was like, I don't think it's the Westies. But I also had to remove Howard off my list because I'm like, he gains nothing from doing that conversation. I was really on Howard. I really, he's oddly absent from this episode basically, from this episode, anyway. Uh, which, he's been very prominent in every other episode. I talked about this with a friend, too, and I convinced them. I was like, this is why I think it's Howard. And they were like, oh my god, you might be right. And I was like, see, when you, when you, when you look at it, it's like, he's never had this much screen time before. I've noticed that his, uh, his name in the credits has gotten bumped up uh, as an actor. Uh, I'm not as familiar with the actor, so I don't have his name memorized the same way. Like, Steve... He's not on Steve Martin, Martin Short, Selena Gomez's level, but he's not like fourth build. And um, he has a, an insane amount of screen time compared to like everyone else who lived in the building <laughs> at some point. Where did they all go? I don't know. It's just, this is somewhere. Um, so. Yeah, so they uh, they hear out. So the Westies find them, and they have a story to tell. So they tell the story because they're like, "You're gonna listen to us," because you know they're claiming that they're not murderers. So they have the story, and uh, then the, they have what uh, Eva calls a ding dong moment where. Uh, she suggests earlier on they're talking about these ways to sort of get the Westies to con to confess to the crime, um, which involved like going to a Tony Danza party, uh, sort of hilarious, and um, they wanted to get them to convince to murdering Zaz and Dudnov, and uh, they basically the Westies catch up to them anyway. And then the ding dong moment ends up being this Helga that they had talked about, who supposedly uh, was the deranged one that nobody was supposed to speak to. Like, oh, she's crazy. Don't listen to her. It's like, well, let's listen to her. Let's hear what Helga's got to say. And so she comes in and she offers her side of the story. Uh, and we also see what Dudinov is doing uh, in his what the whole thing was and it, it's basically a giant nothing burger of of a thing and they talk about whether or not they should put on podcasts and they basically they tell the westies version of it but the apparently the if we accept it as the true story of it um is that dudnov uh, was going to kill himself 
uh, because he found out that he was dying and he wanted, uh, he had this plan to set up the Westies so the Westies could live there. He was a big fan of It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, and now that he wasn't a big fan of It's a Wonderful Life, but then sort of bought into the idea of instead of being a lone man, having this community, which is why he put them all in those apartments and uh, he told them how to keep cashing a social security check and that kind of thing. So they've been keeping up the ruse but they know that, yeah, he's dead and, and he was incinerated. Uh, but that was his wish. And I guess he had already taken the pills, so there's really nothing they could do about it at that time. And Dudenov recorded this special video, which Helga finally sees for the first time, of him saying, you know, sorry, I I, I didn't want you involved because um, I knew that the death of your father affected you deeply and I wanted to try to spare you uh, this experience. So I don't know how much I bought of this, I'm like, there's a chance some of this is bullshit and then they're going to come back around to it. Uh, but the sort of mic drop moment at the end um, was Helga comes back uh, after all is said and done and they decide not to report the report Dudenov is dead in a podcast, but instead uh, tell the story of that they want, the, the fake story, the fake version that Dudenov is in Portugal. Uh, Helga comes back and she's like, your friends as, and I talked on the ham radio a lot and she was worried about a deranged, um, stunt person that, uh, was originally her protege who, uh, was supposed to work on this like upcoming movie with her. And they were like, well, who's the stunt person? They're like, oh, check IMDB. And then it cuts to a shot of Glenn whose finger twitches in bed. Like, I guess he's still out from being shot in the head. Uh, so is Glenn the killer? Uh, do I buy it? Not really. I don't really buy Glenn as the killer. Uh, the thing is that Glenn... I would love to know how he shot himself in the head. Uh, the thing is... Yeah, I, I can see it because he knows he had a metal plate in his head. So he would have had to rig something, though, to have shot himself. And also, didn't it graze Zach or something like that? Like, Zach also, like, it ricocheted and hit Zach. So it was a real bullet, obviously. So it's not like he's not faking it. Um, it's not a blank. So, because they would have found that out when Zach... Uh, cause obviously stuntmen work with blanks a lot. And so if he had pretended that he had been shot in the head somehow, and he wasn't really shot in the head, um, then there wouldn't have been anything to ricochet into Zach. So, uh, that's why I'm like, why would he rig an actual bullet? Because if he had turned his head just the wrong direction, it would have missed the metal plate and he would have blown his head off. <laughs> So, uh, I think it's a little bit of a stretch. Uh, we are in episode nine, so uh, I feel like we're like one episode away from the revelation. I think whatever Glenn has to say is going to lead to a revelation of somebody that we didn't know was a stunt performer. Um, and so I'm looking back at some of the people who we haven't seen in a while, who we haven't talked to in a while, and the question is, of those people, is there anybody that Zaz had worked with that maybe uh, was going to be on a film? We haven't talked to the writer in a while. Um, he hasn't been around for a hot minute. I think it's unreasonable to think uh, at this point that Molly Shannon was secretly uh, like a mega producer in Hollywood and then also a <laughs> training on the side to be a stuntman. And was going to be working on this film with Saz. I think that's a little bit of a stretch. So maybe it's not her. Um, I don't think. I don't, I don't buy Howard as a stuntman. So I don't think Howard is the deranged stuntman. Um, so. Uh, the, the, sis, the brother sisters. I don't think either one of them are stunt people. Um, I. It's, it's unlikely. Zaz has already met some of the other characters from previous seasons. So if it was a character from previous season anyway, I would think 
Zaz would have been like, oh my god, this is the person who's been stalking me. <laughs> you know? So, uh, no, I don't think Divine Joy Randolph is the killer because, again, they've already met and worked together. So, how? Unless they're going to show us that, like, technically they never actually saw each other and were never in the same room at the same time. That would be kind of hilarious. Like, if they found this weird loophole uh, but I don't think that that's, I don't think that's true. Anyway, uh, it kind of made me think, like, what if it was one of the Westies? Like, what if it was, because she's also using the ham radio. It would have had to be somebody who listened to the ham radio. There's no evidence that Glenn had a ham radio and was listening to Zaz's conversation. Um, but... Somebody like maybe Kamal Nanjiani's character could be the spoiler. Uh, the thing is that Kumail has worked out quite a bit and is a lot uh, uh, more fit than he used to be back when he was just starting out as a stand-up comedian. So now he, he actually is plausible as a stunt person. Um, and... It's possible that he could actually be a stunt performer. I think people, when you think of Zaz having a protege, you don't think, you think of somebody who's like Zaz, maybe. That Zaz would have a protege that was like her, not somebody who seems to be like the complete opposite of her. But maybe that's not the case. So, eh. even though we just absolved the Westies, the thing is that he would have known the Dudnoff thing and he would have known, uh, you know, that whole plot and how to dump it in there. And <sighs> he knows the building. Uh, and if it turns out that he actually is a stunt performer, um, he knew how to uncrack because it's shown that the two of them know how to open the window. He does it with Richard Karn's character uh, at the same time. So he would have known how to do that to shoot Zaz. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple things that make me believe that it might just be one of the Westies and it might just be Kumail Nanjiani's character. Uh, so yeah, that is where my head's at now. After all of this data dump of information that we got from the Westies, I'm thinking... There has to be a reason for this. There has to be a reason for this do nothing, for the uh, the acting classes to show that he was interested in that area. He's still sort of chasing clout in many ways because uh, he's part of the thing is that he's like this fitness person that has fame on TikTok, but he can only do like Christmas themed videos. So he's obviously somebody that's still tr trying to chase clout it's possible that uh he had some sort of specificity that needed him to be on set for the next film it's also possible because they they thought although it was oliver that was like running back and forth so he's a lot older than the other two <laughs> that they didn't think that it could be done in the amount of time needed um which is one of the reasons why i thought maybe it was howard because he would have known about the the walls and how like move within and I was wondering if that would help cut off some time. But it's possible that maybe he knows Ben. Maybe like he and Ben know each other and the others don't know that he knows Ben. And Ben did help, uh, not Ben, uh, Glenn. <laughs> same same actor, Paul Rudd, uh, that maybe Paul Rudd helped out. But uh, I'm, I'm going to go with Camille Nanjiani, which is not somebody who was really on my uh, radar. But since they basically just cleared him, it wouldn't be that surprising if they had to go back and be like, wow, we thought, but actually you benefited from it because I think there has to be a reason for the story, for the whole Westies, for the Westies to exist, for this whole thing. I don't think the story exists in and of its own. Like it's not it's just, just in its own bubble. Like it's this thing that was like a distraction. I think there is some connection to Zaz's thing because right now it's not connected at all. It, nobody's connected to Zaz from that. Uh, and I think the key is how does that connect to Zaz? Because 
clearly somebody knew how to pry off the window to use the sniper rifle. We did see a rifle in his apartment. Um, and he does listen to a ham radio. So if he overheard people talking about this thing, yeah, maybe. He could also, it could be two people. Maybe it is him and Glenn. And he was listening to ham radio knowing that it was his, that Glenn's his friend. And he clued Glenn in on this. And the two of them uh, set out to do it. So, could be. Anyway, uh, so that's my episode eight theory slash recap uh, prediction for only murders in the building. Um, I think it's really interesting that Oliver and uh, that Meryl Streep's character of Loretta is, is uh, getting potentially getting married. The question is, will they follow through with that? Uh, she's been in a couple episodes this season, but I think if you hitch Oliver to her character, I think that then it's like, how many seasons of the show is Meryl Streep going to will it, going to want to continue to be on? Because she's, I don't think they can get married and then her not be in season five. So it just creates her returning more, uh, so will they go through with it? I think is the question. So we'll see. But um, Oliver may find himself with a broken heart this season. Meryl Streep's a busy, busy lady. And uh, I don't know if she's got all the time in the world to just keep doing seasons of Only Murders in the Building. But maybe she does. I don't know. Maybe she really likes doing the show with these people. Maybe she just loves the actors. This This show seems to have no problem bringing in talent. So... Uh, I can't wait to see who they bring in next season. I feel like anybody could show up in the show. And they could be like, Tom Hanks is in Only Murders in the Building. I'd be like, yep, that tracks. <laughs> you know, I feel like, I feel like people are wanting to get on this show. Like they're hoping to get the Only Murders call, you know? Um, but that's it. So uh, I'll give this episode, uh, I'll give it an A. Uh, I liked it. I liked how they, they told the story in the Westies and, and I kind of knew that they, it wasn't going to be like all the Westies. I, I thought that that was a little bit of a stretch, but I think it might be one of the Westies. And so stay tuned. We'll find out. Anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I'll see you guys on the other side.